Welcome back to my podcast, all procurement fans. Today, I have a lady from India. She has been working for more than 20 years in procurement in a lot of different jobs. She was in hospitality, she was in production, she was in food industry, she was in service industry, and now she's working for the biggest co-working company in India and was responsible for the procurement in this company. She is passionate about procurement. Her name is Priya Malhorta, and I'm very happy to have her in our podcast because I will ask her many questions about the procurement in India, about the procurement in India in so many different industries, and about her advice to you if you are a young purchaser and want to know how you can get in a position like Priya, what you need to do, what you need to learn, what is important for you. So stay to the very end that you get every information that Priya will deliver to you. If you like videos like this, you should subscribe this podcast now because every week I'm uploading videos like this where I interview purchasing managers from all over the world or give personal advice to you how you can become better in procurement and supply chain management. So have fun in this podcast, enjoy, and I see you in the very end. Welcome back to my podcast. Today I'm here with Priya Malhotra, who is from India. I'm very happy to have you here. Please start with a short introduction about yourself. Namaste, I'm Priya Malhotra from India. So I have 20 years experience in procurement uh, only. So I have worked with many well-known organizations like PVR Cinemas, Cox and Kings, Pizza Vitos, Denso, Mitsubishi Electric. Now I'm working with uh, Office Space Solution. It's the largest co-working space in India and uh, uh, Office is growing very rapidly and I'm happy to working with them. So today I am with Mark to sharing my experience and uh, my learnings about procurement. Thank you very much for coming and welcome to our podcast. The people watching our podcast are a lot of young people also, young people entering the procurement scene. So they are very interested in knowing from experienced people like you, uh, what is your experience? How did you do it? How did you do it to become a procurement manager of what you are now? Uh, what you've already said, you've been working for a lot of different companies. So how, how come you, 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 you changed the companies so often? Was this uh, because you wanted to make a faster career or because you are very much interested in different industries? So, yeah, uh, I want a better growth in procurement and I wanted to learn uh, from different, different organizations about how they are doing procurement. So I wanted mm. to increase my... Uh, procurement knowledge and uh, I wanted to be myself as versatile in procurement. So procurement is my passion. So that is why I have changed multiple organizations to learn their trend, their products and their uh, working style of procurement so that I can keep myself updated and uh, become a versatile in procurement fertility. Mm -hmm. So this is the so main reason. Okay, so all the companies you've been working for are not, let's say, the typical procurement companies. When you think of procurement, you think of production companies who buy a lot of raw materials um, or trading companies who buy the merchandise, but you were more in the, let's say, service hospitality industry. Um, how did you uh, see procurement here? How was procurement developed when you came there? How it is now? How do you see uh, those industries on the Indian market uh, when it comes to the um, level of procurement, to the um, maturity level of procurement? Okay. So see, I have worked, as I said, I have worked with multiple organizations, whether it's related to manufacturing, FNB, service, travel, or now I am working with uh, co-working places. So procurement has always been a strong time, uh, strong in terms of the crisis. In the past, procurement process was conducted via electronics, means such, such you can say email, online marketplaces, team have been restricted by the historical pricing, demand, and trend data available to them, right? The reprocreative insight means that the procurement team were always looking for the best way of proactive approach to handle the timely fulfillment and, and replenishment mm -hmm. rather than the sidestepping from the procurement uh, from the emerging threats, right? Nowadays, as per the new trend, digital uh, digital connect is more efficient now 
देन एवर बिफोर प्रोक्योरमेंट रिवेल्यूटाइजेशन एज एन आउटकम ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी बेकट्रूट यूटिलाइजिंग डिजिटल प्रोक्योरमेंट टेक्नोलॉजी अनेबल एस टू स्ट्रक्चर आर स्पेंडिंग अमंग प्रोवाइडर्स एंड ट्रैक एवरीथिंग सेंट्रली This is not only allowing us to utilizing volume of lower cost, but spend analytics also make it easier to consistently identify cost reduction opportunity. Mm. In addition, in addition, we would be better equipped to manage risk with the technology. We can r- rapidly determine which departments within our organization are ordering and receiving the most goods. Uh, uh whether they are adhering the spending limitation etc that help us in optimizing the inventory utilization and reordering trainings mm mm-hmm. absolutely what what do you think uh, if you have to name uh, three points uh, which are the most important for a procurement manager today so if you are a young purchaser you want to become a successful procurement manager or procurement director and you want to be yeah really successful and you want to learn or you want to know about the three most important points what do you think is the most important for a procurement manager today what he needs to possess okay so one is upskilling like uh, uh upskilling upskilling of your skills what are the new trends coming in the market you have to mm-hmm. be uh, keen about to learn it the processes coming in the market you have to be very very uh, updated on it and uh, the data on which you are working this should be very very optimized and correct and what is the digitalization coming in the market this should be updated and uh, you, uh, if you have a team then team should be fully equipped in terms of your uh, procurement knowledge mm-hmm. Okay, understood. Uh if you look back uh, 20 years ago when you started as a purchaser uh, in your first company and you see uh, procurement today, um how uh, according to you procurement has changed in the last 20 years? Okay. So when I started uh, doing procurement, most of the procurement was happening on manual basis. Where team was doing everything on manual, uh, mm-hmm. tracking data on spreadsheet, and m- m- most of the time spreadsheet was not correct correctly. Uh, the error in the spreadsheet of like um, uh, increasing. more as competitive to nowadays we are tracking entire thing automatically we have softwares and all and timely fulfillment we are doing earlier there was a again uh, manual thing manual prs are coming and sometime teams are missing the prs where uh, the lacking in terms of the collaboration of team is there nowadays everything is on manual everything ev- everything is on a technology so uh, so tech has or digit- digitalization has changed the entire scenario of procurement mm. so from manual uh, earlier 20 years ago everything was happening on manual now everything is coming on the digitalization so the things are more smoother and more easier as compared to 20 years ago mm. so if you look now another 20 years ahead uh, what do you think will happen then do you think there will be still human beings in procurement or only robots or only artificial intelligence or do you uh, think it uh, so what what do you think will be the next wave what will happen next in uh, procurement because those uh, this development the last 20 years was uh, extremely rapid because i also remember my first days in procurement 25 years ago uh, there was still uh, paper on the table uh, we were these these paper cards where everything was uh, ordered in so uh, now you have erp systems ai and all these things so what is coming next uh, how will procurement develop further sure so as uh, procurement has changed procurement trend has changed very rapidly from uh, now also we are still working on the ai tools and all so from la- next 5 years i can see the implementation of, of new and robust pay to p2p process p- and major digitalization innovation should be done in procurement process also in contract management where possible we want to we want to do further digitalization related to 
processes and contract management information management and technical processing we also uh, want to participate in other ut digital digitalization projects in interfere interface with the procurement so more ai ai involvement we are looking mm -hmm. after 5 uh, years uh, more uh, digitalization should be there so that everything come on automation with the ma minimum manual intervention mm -hmm. how do you see um, the the readiness of companies for this for example artificial intelligence i talked uh, uh, yesterday with a guy from the us uh, and i asked him what is the usage of ai in america in the moment and he said about five percent so only five percent of the purchasing people use um, artificial intelligence tools or programs in the moment. So 95% don't. How do you see this number is in India in the moment? So yes, in India, very less 2 or 3% people are using AI, but I want maximum people should be aware about of the AI and using their skill for learning and development in terms of the procurement processes so that we can together build a strong infrastructure to uh, uh, to like uh, the power the procurement mm -hmm. are you using ai already uh, is your your company or you are you using it uh, i'm using it but not on larger scale on very uh, smaller scale of uh, uh, my day on day uses i'm using okay. uh, so you are yeah. so you are one of the the three percent yeah <laughs> you can say yeah What are, what are you using? I mean, for, can you just give an example where you, where you use AI now, what you haven't done, uh, let's say, one year ago, what, uh, and uh, yeah, what you are doing and how this uh, improved your daily uh, work? Sure. So, uh, sometime, like uh, writing a SOPs, day on day, the trends are changing. It's a, like, again, co-working space so things are changing contracts are changing so sometime i'm using ai in terms of the contract drafting sometime i'm using ai in terms of my email drafting sometime in my making my spreadsheet my data mm -hmm. analytics and all so on that way i'm using ai power bi tool so the adoption of new tech uh, i tell you the adoption of new technology tool is changing the skill uh, uh, profile of procurement function in the coming year, the, the increase of use of standardization and self-service will reduce the need of negotiation, buying and reporting skill. Over the same period, procurement function will need more category managers with capability to use advanced analytics and other innovation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are using mostly ChatGPT or uh, other programs also? I'm using ChatGPT and mm -hmm. uh, Power BI. Power BI. Okay. Understood. Okay. Um, coming to a completely different field. So let's say uh, the, the challenges uh, procurement department face in the moment. Um, there are, I think, a lot of uh, risks in the market. Um, there are more challenges, what I hear from the talks uh, with colleagues of yours. What do you think are the biggest challenges Uh, you are currently facing or what procurement managers in India in general are facing in the moment? So first challenge that I am majorly facing is in inaccurate data. Mm -hmm. So 50% of procurement process run on, a, on the spreadsheet that I have told you earlier. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. manner form of data entry is both time consuming and inconvenient. It's also mm -hmm. a big source of human error. Most of the time, team managers have looked into the, the cycle of repetitive work that doesn't contribute to their performance goal. This, this, lower, uh, this, this is lower our employee productivity and cause them to make mistake in, on the inaccurate data. Mm -hmm. So general data, or the data is not good, the data is missing, the data is uh, inaccurate. This is uh, definitely a very, very big problem in procurement departments. Yes, 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 yes. So what, is, so so what can you do against this? What is, what is your yeah, advice I'm, to get data in a better way? So I want some 
digitalization in terms of the data entry in terms of the uh, where i can use ai where i can uh, put some kind of uh, you can say digitalization in terms of my uh, uh, data advancement mm -hmm. so that so that i can uh, remove all the repetitive work that my team is doing i can remove all the errors that could be happen or kind of a mistakes Mm -hmm. second major challenge i am facing this is uh, you can say um, vendor related changing uh, challenges finding genuine vendor with the best product and prices sometimes mm -hmm. we are finding vendor with you can say on uh, not good quality product or sometimes the price point are high so i want i want some kind of a tool should be there where all the genuine vendors club together come there so that we can interact with all the vendors at one platform like kind of mm -hmm. a platform should be there where purchase managers should contact or could contact with the genuine or authenticate partners on the best price point Mm -hmm. Second, yeah, but, uh, but, this, but those kind of those kind of platforms or marketplaces or something like this, uh, this exists yes. according to you, or this still has to be invented. This this should be there. Th that kind mm. of platform should be there where authenticate vendor should place their product, place their price, and place their you can see KYC detailing like what is their profile how they have worked which all are their uh, existing clients which uh, how how many uh, years of business they have already completed what are their product quality specification sheet kind of thing the entire portfolio should be there in terms of the vendor point and from client point from buyer point the entire buyer detail should be there whenever we reach on that marketplace we can uh, uh, pick up that product and start buying start our buying process so that this will reduce our time this will reduce mm -hmm. our you can say uh, authentication of vendor again again authentication of the vendor and which are uh, bridging a uh, which will be uh, like uh, you can say Uh, connecting both the parties in terms of uh, uh, globalization. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, so these are the major challenges uh, you see in the moment yes. uh, with I'm procurement managers. Yes, I'm facing one more challenge. I'm facing mm -hmm. one more challenge, which is related okay. to upgrade the team skills. Yeah. Sometimes, like I know how to use AI, but my team doesn't. I know mm -hmm. how to use Power BI, but my team doesn't. Uh, if I am working on ERP, my team thought that the manual process is more efficient, more accurate. I go on the manual process. The the adoption of the new uh, technology is very very less in team. So team upskilling, team uh, you can say um, uh, qualifying. I need some. So basically, some, uh, basically training, huh? yeah training kind of a training should be there where team should be come with the self motivation i shouldn't like uh, i will not motivate them day day in day out so they should be mm. self motivated and execute their okay, day, so, day day. so you so you, so you expect your employees to do the training themselves so they they basically train for themselves or would you uh, pay a training academy for them to go there i mean do you have a budget in the company for the training or do you expect them to do this themselves I want some kind of training academy come and train them so that they should be come with the self motivations and execute their day on day work. Okay, but but you would pay for the training academy. I mean, your company would pay for them to basically train your people and motivate them to get better. Certainly, certainly, yeah. Okay, how is the market for training academies in India? Are there are there good academies when it comes to procurement and supply chain, or is this more a niche market where it's very difficult to find uh, someone who can do this? Not really. India has very smaller area of procurement. Most of the procurement managers are accidental procurement managers, so they are they didn't have that much of you can say skills or knowledge where they can uh, train that. team members so i want some external parties 
who are very very educated or very very experienced in terms of the procurement come and train our team so that we can get benefited from their views or from their training point point in terms of the supply chain management do you think this is in general that uh, companies in india uh, would spend money on training that they have budget for training or is this only uh, your personal opinion uh no if the organization is is good the academy is good so my organization is happy to hire the academy who can train the team members not mm -hmm. in terms of the procurement only in terms of the operation in terms of the any any segment where the academy is uh, academy having their uh, skills Mm. Because that's very good, yeah. Because I I often um, um, observe with companies that they have a lot of training budgets, but those training budgets are for sales, for marketing, for finance, for production, but not very much for procurement and logistics. Uh, so if you are um, doing this, if you are having this, if you really try to um, encourage your people to do so, I think this is uh, great, and uh, this uh, will definitely enhance uh, the skills of your people. Um, one uh, one other question. When you are, I mean, in so many different jobs, I think you hired a lot of people. You hired a lot of purchasers for your team also. So if you are, uh, if there's someone uh, for a job interview with you, what is important for you uh, for the person who is applying for the job? I mean, what uh, what are you looking for? Uh, what are you asking this person? What should this person be prepared for? Uh, according to you, what are what are important uh, skills and characteristics uh, such a person has to bring? Okay, so one, the person should be very well aware about the end-to-end -end procurement process. The, the processes should be very, very clear how to do P2P process. Mm -hmm. So one is this, the process in that person in mind is very, very clear so that going forward, when that person come on the, uh, on, the uh, on the actual working battle, the I shouldn't be give them his or her a training how to do the procurement. So first mm -hmm. okay, P2P so process. All the technical concept, skills must be there. Yeah? Mm -hmm. No, all the procurement skills must be there. I mean, procurement, procurement skills, skills, process skills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second, the technical skills should be very, very clear. Like if mm -hmm. the person uh, I'm hiring an IT procurement manager, the IT background should be very crisp and clear. Who all are the market? Mm -hmm. what, what all are the market trend is going on in terms of the IT should be clear. Who all are the vendors? Who all are the OEMs? Who all are the Uh, you can say specific and what all are the specification in the market should be very very clear so one p2p process clear two the uh, concept on the specification should be clear three mm -hmm. the enthusiastic per person should be uh, work in the procurement because procurement is not a uh, eight hours job nine to five jobs procurement mm -hmm. is 24 by seven job and we are into service industry so person should be very very keen to serve their users to serve their clients so enthusiastic person is required p2p concept should be clear and Uh, open to learning kind of a person should be there. The mm -hmm. person should be every time like I need a person who is keen to learn new technologies, who are keen to learn new processes, who is very energetic in terms of the uh, doing procurement. Mm -hmm. um, according to you, Uh, what do you think is more important, uh, the social skills, the team skills, uh, that the person is uh, interacting well with the others and also with suppliers? Yeah? So it's really that's a social person or let's say the technical skills that is uh, perfectly uh, uh, perfect knowledge about all the things. Uh, so technically very fit. So what do you think is more important, social or technical? So as per my understanding, technical person should be very very fit in procurement social mm -hmm. person yes a social person could be fit but if you are not aware about the technicality how you do your procurement mm -hmm. okay. what, what i should do for the mm -hmm. social person if he or she is not aware about procurement technicality so technical person should be there the technicality should be there 
second point is person should be social so that he if the person is social he must be having lots of connects in the market in terms of the vendor in terms of the suppliers and all so both of the parameters are equally important for me mm -hmm. okay understood um uh last question uh, to you so you been working uh, 20 years in procurement you said you are really passionate uh, for procurement so if you look back on all those 20 years is there anything you would have done differently anything where you say now man right if i would have done it like that uh, that would help me a lot now or do you say uh, you did everything right and you are very happy to be at the place where you are okay so as i said i have learned a lot from different different organizations and my my profile is very very versatile mm -hmm. so sometimes i i have no regret about it but sometimes i thought i should be keep myself for some particular product or for for some specialization so that i could be very very special on that product but again if i my profile is very versatile so i'm very much happy with my current role that yes i can do procurement from anything from everything uh, so i have global uh, pre, glo uh, i have knowledge in terms of the globalization of procurement i know how to source where to source mm. which all are the countries terms and conditions what are what all are the like uh, uh, documentation required for to buying something from any particular country so i'm very much happy with my current role and i wanted to stay with this role for long mm. tenure and, and i also wanted to learn from other um, you can say um, 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 other organization or you can say other verticals of the procurement like i mm. wanted to learn from the defense how the defense guy is mm. doing procurement mm. i wanted to learn from you can say uh, transportation how the transportation organization are doing their uh, procurement and all yeah, i think you are really a great generalist and i think there's hardly any um, material group in procurement which you haven't touched so i think you have uh, really really vast knowledge which you acquired over the last 20 years Yeah. So Priya, thank you very, very much for this talk. I had yeah. uh, great fun and I think you gave us a lot of uh, good advices uh, which are valuable to the viewers of this podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you very much and all the best for you. All the best for your next 20 years in procurement and I think there will be a lot of uh, great new challenges and experiences uh, you will meet. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed my talk with Priya. I think she gave good information, especially for young people. She gave all the advice what she is looking for when she is hiring uh, procurement people. I think she clearly told you that technical knowledge, procurement knowledge are very, very important for her. And I think she speaks for a lot of procurement managers all over the world. Technical and procurement skills are even more important than soft skills. So if you don't have those skills, you won't become a successful procurement manager. So just with talking and saying how great you are and relationship management, this is not enough. You also need to know the processes. You need to know the technology in procurement. You need to understand the vocabulary of procurement. This is what she clearly said. What I was surprised of, that in India, only 3%, according to her, or in the 2 to 3% of procurement managers are using artificial intelligence. I would have thought that in India, this number is much higher, but obviously also India is not better than the rest of the world. So there is a big future for intel artificial intelligence and people should concentrate and learn more and use it more. So Priya is one example that you can use it, that you should use it. And she gave a few examples how you should do this. So you should follow her example and also go more into artificial intelligence that this number of 3% is rising and that hopefully it's soon at 20, 30 or even 100%. So I hope you enjoyed this podcast. As you probably know, there are lots of other podcasts like this because I interview people like Priya every week. Every week we upload two to three similar interviews to this YouTube channel. So if you have not subscribed it yet, please do it now 
because then you don't miss any of the coming videos and I promise you there are really good videos coming because already I have a lot of other procurement managers appointed which will be uploaded to this channel in the coming days. So see you very soon, all the best to you and bye bye.